Welcome to Survivor NSFW. Holy shit, dude. What a great episode. The merge <laughs> episode. So much crazy shit went down. Johnny Fairplay, how you doing, dude? I'm rocking my new buff. You want to know why? Because it's the merge time. Yeah, and buff is the perfect head garment for running, hiking, biking, cycling, fishing, and more. Whether I'm on the marathon trails or surviving a cyclone, I always have my buff. And get yours at buffusa.com. That's buffusa.com, the official sponsor of the Survivor NSFW podcast. And I love that buff, dude. So it's it's red. It's red. It's red with with like some cool, like like bright purple, not like a dark light. Like it's it's uh. This is one of my favorite buffs in a while. I don't. I will say that I don't like the edge of extinction thing. I mean, like like uh, Devons. I I'm I, I, I like I liked Rick. I hate Devons <laughs> so much. Uh, but he's just like. Yeah, it's just like on the on the buff. That's where they send you. It sucks. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I, I guess it's applicable. It makes sense, but I, I don't like like this. I think the the Edge of Extinction logo is one of the worst. But as far as the surrounding uh, the surrounding players in that the the colors of the buff, this red and purple is is one of my favorites ever. Cool. Well, it looks dope, dude. It, it looks yeah. really cool. Well, yours, yours is in the mail tomorrow, tomorrow morning. I just got them today along with uh, some other special buffs. So uh, so any of the upcoming uh, live shows, uh, I'll, you, you can get a Lesu buff. You can get the Merge buff, which is called the Vada Tribe, uh, or... Uh, at, at, at some of the uh, some of the upcoming live shows, I'm gonna throw out some of the special buffs. I have some Philippines buffs. I have some uh, Millennials versus Gen X. I got. Wait, did I say Millennials versus Gen X? It's almost like I was making reference to April 24th. I'm gonna be in Nashville, Tennessee. Special guest just added. I've already, I've already mentioned Taj from SWV from Survivor Vanuatu. How about I bring Figgy on board from Millennials versus Gen X? How cool is that? Figgy's awesome, man. And so, people, if you haven't been to one of the live events, unfortunately, my circumstances um, at the moment have not had me be able to attend all these. But I tell you what, Johnny but does. You are there live via? Well, I am. I am there. I am there live. And honestly, um, it actually probably sometimes works out better that I'm at a home base because I record this. Everybody, like on. On my yeah. end, you know? And, yeah, no, it uh, does. <laughs> and so it's logistically, it, it is hard to do. But I tell you what, you do not want to miss one of these live events. And if you've never met Figgy before, and Ooh. Taj for that matter, in a great a town but... like Nashville, go to these events. And Johnny, since we're on the subject of the events, give a couple more dates and places sure. where people can get tickets for the other events. Well, as, as far as the Nashville one, that one's at Zany's. That's that's a special circumstance. You go to SurvivorAfterHours.com to get your tickets to that. That is uh, tickets are done through uh, Zany's, which is an unbelievable venue. I'm honored to 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 have been asked. Uh, but other events, we have uh, April 10th, right around the corner. I'm going to be joined by Wendell Holland and Purple Pants Bryce. I can't wait. Yes. Uh, we are going to be at the Brass Tap at the Fitzgerald in Baltimore. That is Wednesday, April 10th. That's an awesome place if you've never been there. Uh, parking is validated. That's very huge in a lot of these places. And that's Wednesday, April 10th. Uh, tickets available at SurvivorTix.com. That's SurvivorTix.com. And then Wednesday, May 1st, the West Coast Invasion of the Survivor NSFW podcast. We're going to be at Busby's West in Santa Monica. So all you Los Angeles folks, get your tickets for that one. That's Wednesday, May 1st, two weeks before the finale. And uh, once again, tickets available at SurvivorTix.com. We're going to be joined on that one, uh, the, the West Coast one, by Rhino and Jay from Millennials vs. Gen X and Nina and, and plenty others. It's going to be a big time. And uh, all you folks uh, in the Detroit, Toledo, Ohio area, looks like we be, might be adding one last show the week before the finale. Uh, look for details next week and also, of course, on SurvivorTix.com. But uh, go ahead, get those Nashville. Uh, I know that VIP is uh, – we're uh, only a handful of VIPs left for 
Baltimore and for Nashville as of right now. So uh, if you were thinking about going VIP, I would go ahead and lock those in. That's SurvivorAfterHours.com for Nashville and Survivor TIX, Survivor TIX for Baltimore, Santa Monica, and the upcoming Toledo, Ohio show. How crazy is that? Right on, dude. I can't believe it, Johnny Fairplay. You're mentioning like, oh, this this event is going to be one week before the finale. I cannot believe that we are talking finale time. Is It seems like right around the corner, man. This season is blasting by. We are it, we, already... dude, we, we, we have a jury. We, we have know. three people in a jury mind blown i know dude so the show <laughs> i was out on my patio man it's a gorgeous night had the patio heaters going we're out there with mexican blankets that we love chilling i got my notepad boom tv comes on and it's literally right into yeah. no the no. show Previously on Survivor, Nothing. these I, assholes were doing this. Those assholes were doing that. They all suck. We hate them all, except for Johnny Fairplay. He hates one in particular. His name is the War Dog. <laughs> He's got the shirt War Dog sucks eggs. Available at JohnnyFairplay.com. No, none of that. No, we didn't, Jeff, Jeff did not plug the T-shirt. Did not say the War Dog. Didn't do any of that. Bam. It, I know. I thought. Come on in, guys. Yeah, I thought, dude, is my is my DVR? Did I miss yeah. something? Did so I? It, like, yeah. Why is why is my DVR starting at eight oh four? Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, dude, it goes right into it. It is merge time, okay? And this, I love the way this starts out because yeah. it starts out immediately with a bang. Jeff starts talking, dude, about. It, as a Survivor fan and as a Survivor player, it gets you chills when Jeff, I know this sounds nerdy, but I'm a nerd. Jeff starts talking about the iconic moments. Sometimes it takes years for something to become icon and legend in Survivor. Well, that, that, that I did. Okay, so what, I mean, like, when I did the Dead Grandma Lie, I felt like that was a moment when it happened. Oh yeah, it was a moment. Okay. Right, yeah, right. Okay, yeah, like yes, when uh um when the the outcast tribe, you know, your past has come back to haunt you. I felt that was an icon, you know, like like everyone's mean mean mugging, mean facing over there, and Johnny Fairplay has the biggest smile in the world because I'm looking at it as a television fan yeah. and looking at it through the eyes. I'm just like, this is good TV. Mm -hmm. This this is what you make the show for. These quote unquote iconic moments. Yes. But they didn't take years. Like so what what is an iconic moment that took years to 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 process? I mean like like S Sandra was was not the most memorable winner of all time, but after her second one, then going back her first one becomes iconic? I don't know. That's that's uh that's a good question. I I think for me it's more of you know, like there's been so many seasons, dude. Maybe, and, and maybe the snake and the rat wasn't iconic at the time. Yeah, I think that's a perfect. Looking back at some of those older seasons, dude, and and yes, I, I, I'm I'm just my brain's going crazy right now. So like when Russell Hance played his first season and he was finding all these idols without clues. That I think was like, wow, this is like, like this is a survivor first, and this, that, and the other. Now here's the thing. We're talking about these iconic moments, and Jeff's about ready to tell them what this iconic moment is going to be. But is it really that iconic, Johnny, to you, considering we talked about the outcast twist in Pearl Islands? This yeah. is very similar. Re well, I, I think it's more I, like I think they mixed it up enough that I, I can't complain. OK, because uh, th this is very close to Redemption Island. Right. Well, I tell you what, when when uh, when they have the edge of extinction, people walk in and you see the reaction of the tribes, you know, that are that are merging right now, see yeah. them walk in and this this holy shit moment. That was awesome. It was an awesome vibe. It got me excited as a. Oh, viewer. yeah, it, 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 it was it was goosebumps. And like you're, you're sitting there watching like what? I think the surprise element made it so much better than Redem like I thought I thought Redemption Island was kind of lame. Yeah, right. No. You know, I, I, I hated the I hated the channel. I hated like 
like with with when they would bring the you know the tribes to watch them compete in the duels and stuff like that i, I was just like oh my like this is so much time is being taken taken away from character development right. to 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 you know to watch the the like i mean there was a time in which i used to, like before i was doing podcasts when I would watch Survivor on my DVR, like, you know, I'd, re I'd record it, you know, go out, you know, either watch later that night or the next day. And, I, and if I didn't see someone hit their head or, 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 or crunch their nuts, I would just fast forward through the challenge. Yeah. I just did not care. Right, right. So now that I do a podcast, you know, I got to, you know, I got, I got to be professional. You know, this is kind of like the opposite of the Russell show. I don't know if you. <laughs> no, yeah, we actually have. To... I don't know his name, but he's stupid. Fine idols. Yeah. So if if you're a, like if you're on a, a a patron of ours, you you get the video version of our podcast, right? So you can if you're not a patron and you want to find out what it's all about, go to patreoncom slash NSFW. and there's different tiers. One of the tiers, just $5, you get the video version of this podcast. And right now I'm holding up my little notepad that Johnny always makes fun of because I write my notes on a notepad throughout the show. And I got pages and pages. Johnny does it on his iPhone. But the deal is, is on the Patreon, you get the video and uh, you also get the Castaway watch-alongs that we do and the Q&A. So yeah. give it a try. Q&A is the big thing. Oh, and uh, we had – Four new patrons uh, this week. If if we uh, I I said I said if we got uh if we got ten this week I'd call every every one of them. We uh we we only we only got four new patrons. So you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna I, I said I'd, I'd cut it off at Wednesday. I'll I'll cut it off by uh by uh Saturday. So if we get six more patrons Saturday, I'll call Caleb. I'll call Preston. I'll call Travis. And I'll call Robert. Our four new patrons this week, and then I'll call the next six if they join. But uh, before Saturday, that's awesome. And I just want to say to the people that are patrons, thank you very, very much. Johnny and I have a great time doing the podcast and all the Patreon content with amazing special guests throughout these watch alongs and so forth. We have a lot of fun and we do this to just bring you guys the most fun content. When I came on board with Johnny, you know, uh, I'm I'm Mr. Nice Guy, one of Johnny's top ten nicest survivors ever. Johnny's the the black hearted uh, villain of, of Survivor, and him and I, we uh, have this great rapport, and we became great friends. And I love what we do, Johnny. I look forward each and every time that we are filming and recording. I look forward to it. I'm I'm not lying. This ain't a, a bunch of shit. I'm stoked. And uh, yeah. thank you, patrons. Now, listen. Oh, real, real quick, as, as much as I love doing the, the weekly podcast that drops every Wednesday here in Audio Boom, and, and, and thanks to the fine folks at Audio Boom for, for hosting us, I, I love my favorite show each week is the Q&A. And uh, we'll be opening the thread. Once, once you become a patron, uh, you, you, uh, we send you a secret. Uh, you get to join the secret uh, patron group on Facebook, and we open the thread. And if, if you, if you're, if you're not on Facebook, just, just shoot me a message on, and on Patreon, and, and, uh, and, and you can just direct message me what, what your question is. But uh, we're gonna open the thread uh, later tonight, and uh, Thursday night we'll be recording the Q and A that patrons will be uh, listening to on Friday, and, and that. That's what I mean because it's 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 not just Survivor. Uh, it's a lot of Survivor, but a bit, but it's it's wide open. Whatever you you guys steer the ship, and it's a really fun deal. But uh, as far as steering the ship, let's talk this episode, dude. They do I the tell merge. You if the people come in, I I, I, I spoiler alert. I, I'm gonna fast forward a second here, yep. uh, Matt. Yes. When, when this challenge is over, and uh and 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 you see the tears, Can't uh. I I felt I felt like they finally did the outcast twist right Dude. because there there was there was so much I I felt there was so much left on the table with the outcast you know you got the die jerks and all that and the, you know they're there for revenge baby and 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 you did you got you got Burton with the uh, with the, with the heroes edit you know similar to Devin's you know it's just like hey you you don't know what it's like until you've been where I've been, you know, it's the lowest of the lows. It is the worst, you know, that, and that, that was, that was that moment, but the others still thought that they had a chance of coming back in. So we didn't get the, you know, that 
thing there. Right. With this, Devin's wins. He's back in, and you do see the others thinking that this is the end of the journey. They sacrificed. They were on this shithole island yep. for you know for for however many days they're there, and then you know to not get back in, and it it, it it's it's pal. However, I mean. We do have a twist in that the people on extinction will comprise our jury. Yes. So that that that's different. But as as soon as as soon as Propes goes, all right, guys, you know, for your if, if your name isn't Devons, you're not back in this game, you know, go back go back to the edge of extinction and there's a chance, you know, at the end of the game you can come back, you know. I'm sitting there thinking, there's no way on the planet that any of those people sitting there, right? Like, you know, Reem, Keith, Chris, Wendy, or Aubrey, that I give a million dollar vote if they come back into the game at day 37. I'm sorry. You're, you, you won the Edge of Extinction game, but you didn't win Survivor. Yeah. Well, I also think what I thought you were going to say is this. So if, if you're Keith or Wendy or whatever, and you're looking at, you know, half a man and, um, you know, War Dog and Joe and all these people, sh there's a good chance that Reem, even if she has a chance to get back in, ain't going to win a challenge against whoever's left in the game. So why not just go home? Because there's no way that you'll ever win a challenge with those people. Yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> let, let, let's talk about the challenge. All right, so then, here's we, the deal. We, we so Chris, we're going into this challenge, and it's awesome because the Merge Tribe gets a front row seat to the edge of extinction people for yeah. this challenge. Right? And they're flipping out. And, of course, someone has to yell, I knew it. And it's like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> and so Chris has an advantage because Chris had uh, these – items to practice the challenge with yeah but then, but it, I, I think i think he ended up sharing with 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 everyone else and then keith had an advantage which basically he put onto chris as a disadvantage where at the end of the challenge chris would have like 30 knots to untie which yeah. would slow I, I, him down i felt like that was more of a uh productions like uh hey um we really like this Devons guy. We really like this Aubrey girl. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's a way that we can kind of make sure that this Chris guy, who wasn't that spectacular his first go round, right. kind of make sure that he's not the one, yeah. then that'd be nice. Because right. like, I, I still feel in my heart of hearts that this whole Edge of Extinction was was put in play to so joe anglum has a chance to win oh I, yeah I, 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 I believe that wholeheartedly personal opinion Do, okay are we gonna see one uh 30 knots put on joe anglum on day 37 probably not hmm weird <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I, I, I just remember this conversation remember this oh, yeah, day i will i will okay it's we're going to see But day 37, you know, when Joe Anglum isn't battling 30, uh, 30 knots, right. or or if he is, and they're the loosest knots of all time. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> it's just like, to overcome 30 knots, you've got to give this man a million dollars. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think anyone, if the, the, the person that gets back in the game later in the game, there ain't no way that a jury is, I don't care how, if Joe. But, no, but, but see, but the jury is them now. Yeah, that's true. That's what changed it for like, like, know, you know, before weird. I do that, I'm just like, there's no way. But now I'm just like, whoa. Well, the greatest thing, like, like here's the deal. When, when you run across people on the street sometimes, right? I, I run across people. Oh, I used to watch Survivor. Oh, that show's still on type thing. Survivor <laughs> is still on the air because for one, it is a family affair. I've been watching yeah. since day one. I'm watching with, this is the night of the week where, my wife, myself, and my two boys are undivided attention watching Survivor. Like when they watch The Flash, I've kind of jumped the shark and I I go do something else or come down and do a podcast with you. I just lose interest easily. I've not lost interest in Survivor because they keep reinventing the game. 
doing twists. And like we've always said, Johnny, as, as players, sometimes the twists and the idols and the advantages and the nullifiers, it sucks because you can get totally screwed in the game. However, as a viewer and for the, the people that are just becoming viewers, they got to keep doing things fresh. The Edge of Extinction at the beginning of the season, like leading up to it, I was like, oh, God, this is going to be really bad. But after tonight, dude, they did a lot of really cool things, and we're going to get into some more of those. But here's the deal. The challenge that they're doing, you kind of go up a ladder, then you go down a rope kind of uh, course, and you got to grab, you know, untie some knots to grab the bamboo poles, tie them together, retrieve a key. I, 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 I've done that. Yes. <laughs> yep. I, I... Heck yeah. And you retrieve a key, and then you have to maneuver this uh, ball through like a snake labyrinth type thing. Yeah. Didn't Nick win that one last season? I think so. But uh, but don't don't quote me, dude. For the people out there that are that are experts on everything that happens in every season, don't quote me, but I think you did. But yeah. I like this challenge. And some of the takeaways, well, here's what I liked about it. First of all, I love the reaction from the merge tribe that's watching this challenge. And I also like that they designed this challenge, Johnny, in a way to where it's it's not a blowout. It's extremely close. So if you're a fan of any one of those Edge of Extinctioners, you have someone to root for. Because you show Wendy, she is slow and maneuvering this, and she's having her freaking Tourette's Oh, squeaks. my God. I, 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 I was ready to cry for Well, I, yeah, I, I, was, I was ready to cry for and then I lose that feeling later. We'll, we'll get to that. Now, my, my, my first take, well, Aubrey with the first key was just like, wow. I mean, like, that's someone that's played Survivor 18 times, as Aubrey has, right. and, 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 and knows how to navigate through a challenge, and kudos to her. Yes. Uh, Chris, his legs might be the biggest legs I've ever seen on Survivor, <laughs> ever. And I mean, like, I know wrestlers with smaller... Well, a lot of wrestlers skip leg day because <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's an upper upper uh, upper body sport. Yeah. But, uh, but, uh, but yeah, and, uh, and Chris and Devin's right there, and I'm sitting there thinking, I'm just like, man, I'm just like, this kind of has Devin's name written all over it. But but my, my, my favorite moment was Reem yelling, come on, dude, and followed by, damn it. Was uh, yes. if if I wouldn't have heard a dude and a damn of any kind coming from Reem, I would have been disappointed. But uh, no, uh, Wendy getting getting the Tourettes during the the last part of the challenge, I'm just like, like it, it's just like God couldn't wait five minutes to make this girl. I mean, but but it's it's her. I mean, like you know, uh, she she tells us. At the beginning of the season, that you know she has Tourette's and nervousness can trigger can, bring, can trigger and and you know you're talking about you know one of the biggest moments in this girl's life and 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 it's and it's on on something based on balance and 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 concentration and for that and for her to do so incredible I mean like she's right there in spite of I know. And, it's, and I was just like, wow. I mean, just kudo. I was, I was so proud. I mean, like, I, 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 I thought that was the, the, for me, the, the, uh, w one of the best moments. Of this whole thing. I mean, it was, it was just really powerful. Really, really cool to see. Uh, uh, I, I agree one hundred percent. I thought she was. I was like, oh my god, dude. Like, she's gonna freaking drop this ball because of her Tourette's. Because she's like literally making these squeak noises and doing uh, yeah. stuff with her eyes. And I'm like, that's a challenge, dude, where you can't a, a little and, mind. And, yeah. And she has to like put, put, put like the side of her, her wrist to her, to her forehead to, to control and stop this. And this is while trying to stop and control a ball. On the, <laughs> oh yeah. I know it was epic. So we see, you know, Wendy was getting close, having the Tourette's deal. She drops, then Chris drops, and then boom, Devons wins. I was psyched that Rick – I'm sorry I called him Devons. Yeah. <laughs> Rick Rick Devons wins, and he could not be more excited to Hero, be back. Hero edit. Hero, Hero edit, 
possible winner edit. I felt like it was great. And do the because edit- like like prior to him like prior to his uh, vote out, he got a lot of a lot of airtime for a non uh, a non returnee. He did, and I'm just and I'm just like I feel based on the edit that this guy must be the guy that comes back because they devoted a whole lot of time to a guy that went out relatively early. Right. They did. And, 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 well, and then he does, it does come back and, 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 and he comes back with, with, with just a, like, I mean, what's the term is hero edit and, and, and you can't write it any better than that. He did it. I, I went like Rick Devins, his personality, his love for the game, his just, dad bod just his whole like he's funny and i can envision johnny when when you see the winner of survivor edge of extinction i envision him and his family and them celebrating like you can almost picture that in your mind yeah. that he could be the winner he's a man of the, he's a man of the people he is and the thing is so when he after he wins this is what you were talking about a minute ago the beauty of pure human emotion, Aubrey and Reem. And I mean, even Reem is like, look, I, I've, I've watched this show for 18 years. And, and this, is, this is my, j- j- exactly what you stated earlier without he- hearing her say that you would say this any week. This is the time the family, con- like, you know, pho- phones off. Don't yep. call. That's right. Family time, kids get in here. Survivors on. Yep. And 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 they ain't coming complaining. Right, right. So, dude, it was it was e- emotional, man. And then they're kind of talking to each individual. And then Wendy. Person. Yeah, she's all <laughs> upbeat and positive acting. She just always like uh, smiling and uh, yeah, it's it's crazy. So we don't really realize it. So everyone kind of. Well, well, he said he says, you know, what you don't know is uh, you have a chance to play again, you know, and 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 you know, and Aubrey's like, fuck yeah, you know, and, and, and I'm sitting there and right there, I'm just like, you're excited to go back, but I would honestly never vote any of you five a million dollars. Right? No, I don't think. Yeah, I, did, I like. I, I mean, <laughs> I can't see it. No, I, I, I can't either. So but he, but now with this twist, it's just like okay, do those assholes take care of their own and say fuck the people that played Survivor? Dude, all I know, we're doing the Survivor. There's only three of them now. Yeah, so it's a lot. It's a lot easier to do that. Like I mean, like you know, if, if the, the the numbers are, are are working in favor of an honestly played season of Survivor versus some kind of loophole bullshit. Right. Right. Yeah. So, well, they everyone walks back to, or they they show them going back to Edge of Extinction. Then it shows, you know, the the merged tribe kind of walking away from the challenge. It's day seventeen at this time. We have the merged tribe, and Julia we see talking about hopefully Julie. Keep, keep Julie. It. No, no well, way. I, oh, I, well, oh, dude, Julia, I was talking, I'm talking about Julia. Gotcha, gotcha. Sorry. Uh, wait, no, I, no, 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 no. It's okay. She's talking about keeping the original common well, again. No, but she doesn't get any. She doesn't get any confessional time. So I was distracted. Yes, I know. She's finally. <laughs> I, I she's finally she getting. She's yeah. finally getting a confessional. <laughs> and and then we see Devin's kind of talking about like you know, he doesn't want to be the easy vote off because technically you would think that Rick Devin's could be the the easy target. Like let's send him back there, man. Let's just keep. You know, get it. He's already been out of the game. Let's get him out of the game. It seems like a an obvious play. You know what I'm well, saying? I, I don't like. Uh, I, I, it's corrected later, but like on on Pro Islands with the Outcast twist, when when they came back, they were uh, the the two returning players were were both giving given indiv- uh, immunity for the first tribal council. To, as as a way to allow them to integrate themselves back into the game, right? And I liked that. Like you know, I I think that kind of makes. I mean, it's just give them a fighting chance. Oh yeah, I I like that too. So you know, so, so but I I think I don't think it's one hundred percent necessary with uh if if you time it out with the merge in that there's so much free free for all chaos that you can integrate it's not necessary to integrate yourself in however 
you know, we're going to learn about a, a twist later that 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 does aid and abet in 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 that process. But uh, but no, w- with the merge, we we have Wentworth, you know, letting us know she's not happy that Devons is back. Anyone but Devons. I was like, okay. And then uh, and then we learned that Julie likes Rick. She's like. How can you not like this guy? This guy's like, he just he just overcame all the odds and came back. I like him. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I am a fan of Julie. Julie oh, going yeah. into this game, dude, pregame, and I think you know, looking at her, I was like, man, I, I, don't, I, I don't think she... credit pregame. You did? I don't think I, think I, I did. Only, I think you and Randy both dismissed her, and I was like, you know what? She's been sitting back watching. I, I didn't know that she was. We'll, we'll get into her strength later. She's uh she's pretty strong, but uh yeah. no, I I felt she knew the game. I I felt that she was uh she she like uh the older older maternal instincts would kick in, and that that people would look to her for advice, but not too old to where she's not cool enough to to integrate uh, within the tribe. I, I she 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 checks off so many boxes that that uh I, it's really cool to see all that come together now. Well, uh, I, at, I at this tell stage you what, game. dude, I'm I'm a big fan. After tonight, I'm a big fan of Julie. I, it's not that I was not a fan, but I'm just like, holy know. shit, she's a yeah. physical threat. She's a strategic threat. So here's the thing: we, I want to mention that they show a, bl- a brief clip of Edge of Extinction. Oh yeah, where Wendy and Keith raise the the mast and. Yeah leave the game i i would never as a fan of survivor even if i knew i have no chance there's no fucking way i'd ever raise that mask yeah i uh well it was uh it kind of I don't know if they knew at the time about, you know, being a part of the jury and all that stuff. As I said, like, if, 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 I, I, I'm with you, but if, if you know that there's no shot, then then maybe that's the justification. I mean, we, let's go back a week because because we didn't address it during the actual podcast last week, but but it, it's been brought to our attention post post uh, pod in that, you know, Wendy gets voted out. She gets the hug from Jeff and then and then goes off and she's like, "All I want's a cheeseburger and a shower." Mm-hmm. Um, what happened to the vegetarian? Oh God! Who sacrificed her game? Yes. Save the chickens. The it's first really- thing she wants when she gets voted, she didn't say it like you know a a, a Beyond Meat, you yes. know, a, a Bo- Boca Burger. Yes. No. No, I she know. wanted a cheese burger, not right. made out of cheese. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. No, I think it's ridiculous. I think it's hypocritical. It, it, uh, it it's making the people that are animal rights type people probably laughing, like, "What the hell's this girl's deal?" But well, I think you know. she, I think, I think she, she forfeited her Sia check right there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> the Sia, Sia money's not going to. So, but uh, but like, I don't think she was a true fan. I like. No way. I, if you're a true fan. So if if you're watching this, tweet Johnny Fairplay or myself or both of us. I want to hear what you guys think. If if you're a true fan, would you ever raise the mast and leave the game? I would never. And I'm so freaking pissed off cuz we're watching Caramon right now on our on our Patreon deal. We're doing the Caramon watch along and you know, when I got voted out of Survivor, I didn't have a chance to get back in the game. And, and I'm like, I'm seeing these people that have the chance on tonight's episode. And then they now even have another chance. So they're with Re- control of the jury. Yes. Like Reem, dude. Reem has been on Edge of Extinction since the, the very first. She was the first person there. Yeah. And see, I, that's, that's she's my in the problem. Game. She's in the game the whole time, dude. But my problem is someone voted out day three did not – I mean, like, I, I could never award that person a million dollars, nor do I feel that they have a right to determine that I win a million dollars. Yeah, the jury thing is – that is a, that is a bit uh, – it's a weird twist. Jury I mean, management is, is, is very tricky. So, I mean, like, like – I don't like the the idols and and the advantages. Not like I, ju- I just think it's too much. However, I do think 
we, we are returning to a more old school system of play in that I, I, I think the social game uh, will have to be raised on, uh, on the edge of extinction to right. some degree or, or, or playing to those people more so in, in uh, during tribal council than ever before. Right, right. So, or like you know, say say you're say you're a Rick Devins, and um, you know you you you've bonded with or like I would imagine you have in your pocket at this point, you have a Ream, you you have an Aubrey, and uh, you have a Chris. All right, they're they're Team Devins right now. Yeah. Okay, you you make it towards the end, or or you make it to the end, and right before then. That's when you hope, with without your doing, perhaps, or or maybe maybe it's kosher and 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 they're okay. But you send a, a David right there towards the end to handle your edge of extinction jury management for you. Right. Yeah, dude. It's it's a lot to think about, dude, because it is a crazy there's all these scenarios that could happen and i don't think i mean survivor is not fair so yeah. many i mean like, like right right now like looking at that jury like war dog has a what a one in eight billion chance of winning <laughs> 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 what happened to war dog's airtime tonight well speaking of airtime yeah. i d- uh, dude it's been dominated by a handful of people. Like yeah. I'm but just it now. Up. It opened up tonight. It did open up, but I've I've never seen. I don't think confessionals of that Aurora chick. A half a man barely gets any. I, I it's Gavin doesn't have. I mean, people are getting I some, know. but it's like, dude, come on. But here's the deal: we after after Wendy and Keith raised the mast, they left. They're out there. She's eating her cheeseburger, and and Keith is doing whatever Keith's doing. Yeah. All right. Uh, so so we, we come back. We we learn that the tribe. See here. here here's here's the thing. I have this in my notes. Here's what I miss about the old Survivor. All right. There's so much going on. You know, like you have you have an edge of extinction. You you have uh you you have idols. You have advantages. You have a split. You have all these things that 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 consume so much time. Remember when there would be a merge, and there would be five minutes of airtime discussing what the name of the tribe was going to be. Oh yeah. Yep. And then there's another five minutes of showing them paint the flag. Yep. None of that. Yeah. Okay. Well, this tribe's called the Vada tribe. And we find out in the closing credits, there's a fucking Phoenix on the flag because Joe spent his time doing that instead of uh, uh, trying to play the game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. So we, yeah. we see, we're, we're back at the island. Kelly and Lauren are talking. They both have idols. You know, they're. Oh, 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 and what else do they have, Matt? Clothes. Who the fuck gave Lauren clothes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Thanks, Thanks I, a lot. I, I, what? Also, gave Victoria clothes. Not cool. <laughs> I don't know if you saw like in, the, in that lineup at the very beginning, pre-merge. Victor- Wowzers! There's a uh, <laughs> there's there's some uh, some still screenshots that I will be seeking out on Thursday. <laughs> Victoria, the 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 look for the ring. It's it's. <laughs> <laughs> that's the wow. latest but yeah dude I, you know the, those you know kelly and lauren they they have idols and and kind of, <laughs> kelly kind of goes to joe she makes yeah. uh you know she calls her sales her, pit yes that's right <laughs> i have that written as joe feels he's at the bottom yeah and Ke, you know kelly's kind of like i, I want to make an easy vote and take out rick devins and i think she's got the the mentality if it you know anybody but me he's at this been- point well, well I, I think it's even more than that. I think it's one of those, we already voted him out once. It, it, like, you know, people have championed this before. This right. shouldn't be that, that, like, you know, let's just do it again. Yeah. Right. So I, but I think Kelly Wentworth has that same black heart that a Johnny Fairplay does. Oh, yeah. And, and, and that, that she, she missed that whole hero moment, like, 10 minutes prior. Right. It's just, you know, it's like, hey, Kelly, did you see that that whole thing transpire? Like that was that was just like, yeah, fuck that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I get like, you know, because, because you know, fast forward a little bit. We have, you know, Wentworth and, and Lauren, you know, both making this pitch and they're playing a mean fucking game, but yeah. a, but a pretty smart game. Yeah. And, and, and like I'm sitting there going, wow, me, Lauren and, and, and Kelly Wentworth 
probably be a pretty fearsome uh, threesome. Yeah. So right, in, right. In, in, in every facet. <laughs> <laughs> well, but the, o- but the only problem with them playing this mean game, most people don't play a mean game on Survivor. Right, right. You're right. They don't. They don't. Yeah. Huh? And they're, they're pitching this just non. They're just like, hey, why don't we send the motherfucker back? And they're just like, are you kidding? Yeah, <laughs> did, yeah. did you not see this great moment? Yeah. <laughs> like Jeff even said, there's iconic moments. This guy won it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and Ju- you know, Julie. Which, which, which the, the follow up pitch from, from Wentworth should have been. Yeah, that's the motherfucker that gets all the votes at the end, the guy that wins those iconic moments. Yeah. So it's not me being cruel and 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 heartless because he's already gone there. It's me going, "Hey, this motherfucker can win now." Yeah. Let's stop that. Yeah, and and people are play- it's a game, you know, and you got to you got to make the best decision for <laughs> your game. Her, her, her quote unquote sales pitch to to the to to the all girl alliance was flawed in that uh, she she <laughs> there was no sympathy and and I I, th- I think if she had like conversely coming coming through with with a you know with you know the, these same heartstrings that that make you not want to vote him out or the same heartstrings that win him a million that's why this is an easy vote based on that yeah and we see Julie in the next scene Julie's like. Man, I, I, this that's not in my moral code. Yeah, I don't agree with with that decision. Like we need to. She get doesn't somebody... see him as a threat. She yeah. just sees him as a nice guy that just battled the odds, which is kind of how you win the game. <laughs> but but I agree. Like I mean, yes, you know, sometimes you can't let your heart and morals get in the way of of strategic decisions. But she's like, look, voting off Kelly or Lauren. Is a better option right now. Those than, are me than, than voting out a Rick Devins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so uh, we 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 uh well, go ahead. No, no. So we we go and we finally see the you know day eighteen the Vada tribe. Devins notices something in his bag, which is yet another twist to the game. What do you think about I, this? I thought it was going to be one of those uh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh vibrator dick sleeve things. <laughs> <laughs> How cool would that have been? Like Rick's just like, dude, hot octopus had oh, me up. Hilarious. How cool is this? That's funny, dude. But, oh, it was not. So in Rick's bag is basically two pieces of an idol. It cannot be used at the next tribal council, but you have to give half of the idol to someone else, and then you guys can put that together to use after. In- exactly. What yeah. are your thoughts? Well, uh, I don't know if you noticed this. Or, so when you see the idol, when uh, did you notice the individual immunity that that same idol is in the middle of it? Ooh, I did not. And I'm wondering if that can be removed from the necklace and played separately. That was the, <laughs> the same design. That would be another twist. That was that would be crazy. I don't know. Maybe, I mean, like, pipe, pipe, that wasn't me. Well, I noticed it too, but it was first brought to my attention before I could verbalize it yeah, out loud. Piper did it. Told you. Piper. Piper. Piper's in on. She's like, Dad. <laughs> Dude, that's all. But so Rick approaches David about kind of like we can use this. This is like a bargaining chip, right? Yeah. A, a trust thing. So we go right from there to the immunity challenge, and they show the immunity necklace that you just talked about, which is pretty damn sweet. Yeah. I, I always like seeing what the, uh, I, some... I, I, I like, I like seeing what the tribal immunity thing was. I thought it was really cool that they had the dragon and then they had the bird fighting from underneath, you know, for, uh, as the, uh, um, the, the, the tribe immunities. And then I, I, you know, I've never like, I never made, you're, you're going to be shocked. I never won individual immunity ever. You, you would think, you know, record holder, obviously, but, uh, but nope. And, uh, I, I you know what I, 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 what you call it? They, uh, Joe is on or was, I guess not, no longer. He was on pace to beat Boston Rob's record of most individual or most, most immunity wins, wow. but, they're kind of, but I'm just like, yeah, but, uh, if I played 26 times, oh, yeah. I, think I would have the record too. Right, right. That's exactly. kind of a that's kind of a fucking 
So we co opted, co -opted record. So Johnny, would you rather have the record of most rewards taken by a single survivor or most immunities won? Uh, the one, the the record that I hold, mo most rewards enjoyed by a single survivor in an individual season, the history of the show. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what I would want to. Because that that shows how great strategic that that shows how great my social game is. Right, right. I was and, so asked to participate in those in those rewards, and that helped you to deal with the craziness of Survivor, getting food and comfort and shower whatever you got you know what i'm saying that had to stuff I, I i got i got an episode that just showed me <laughs> joy and shit Dude, I know. worst episode ever oh my god as yeah. i said i love me and i hated that episode right right but, but for the for those of you that don't know what we're talking about go patreon and uh it's on the uh the castaway watch along i believe it's episode 11 on pearl islands and uh that's available at patreon.com slash survivor nsfw and if only if six of you do it i'll give you uh give you guys a phone call so oh, just yeah. just thanking you for doing and if seven of you if, of you do it i'll give a phone call eight nine ten eleven you, twelve you'll give him a phone call maybe 13 <laughs> 14 i could i could i could call all day yeah you could so, and johnny I'll, does I'll do that a course of a couple days right oh yeah right on right on so th this challenge is a classic just challenge where the you know, last man standing i'm just thinking 15 people i'd call <laughs> <laughs> hell yes com slash survivor so everyone has to stand on a beam yeah. hold a like a, a long pole above their head and there's a statue balancing on the end of it. Yeah, I feel like we've seen this before, but if not, we've seen something just like it. So, what difference does it make? So the the, the challenge, the same challenge, is something we've seen. So I noticed that. Julie looked awesome the whole challenge. Yes, For, like the whole challenge. I keep panning. She's got guns. I mean, like <clears throat> I didn't know, but apparently, whittling little acorn toys and peeing in the park builds triceps. <laughs> she had, Dude, she was a beast, dude. And people even that were on the bench that had fallen out of the challenge are like, dude, look at her. She's freaking, she's a badass. So and for Lauren, Lauren finally got fed. I mean, th this girl hasn't eaten the first half of the game. She got fed, and if and I would imagine she squirreled away some stuff other than rice to, you know, to supplement her meals going forward, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. And she should be an individual immunity beast going forward. She should. So we're at... At about forty versus minutes, guys in, or versus guys or girls. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Totally. So forty minutes in, into the challenge, Julie, Joe, and Lauren are the the three final three in this challenge, and then Joe drops out. He he was looking solid, but I tell you what, the whole challenge, dude. I I told Tessa, dude, Julie is looking strong, and Jeff Probst even mentioned that. Julie wins. I am stoked. I think I, you're smitten, Matt. I underestimated her. <laughs> are she, you, got, are you, she got she got emotional, dude. Are, are you smitten with Julie? Uh, dude, I like Julie. And the thing is, <laughs> dude, I, I'm just throwing it out there. All right. <laughs> but what I love about it is, she got emotional because she's like, "Look, I, I've been watching this 18 years. Yes, my husband and kids are gonna be proud." I teared up, dude, because I'm like, I, I know in my personality like if i was in her position i would be doing this i'd probably be crying a lot harder and stuff because i just probably would be <laughs> overcome with emotion but dude she is stoked she deserves to be uh on this uh season i'm glad she got cast and like i said i underestimated her but dude we not only find out that she is a physical threat by winning the first immunity challenge but we see her talking to Victoria after the challenge about blindsiding Kelly, which means, dude, she is a gamer. She's like, I am not here to have uh, everyone make me like a, uh, uh, just a pawn and, and tell me what to do and how to play this game. I'm going to play this game on my own terms. And she's bringing it, dude. And yeah, and no, I, I, I felt that, that she stepped into a power position. I, I, I felt that, we saw glimpses previously that Ron is right there. I, I think I think the hierarchy 
is is Julie and then Ron. And I, I think uh, I, I, I thought Victoria was a little higher in the food chain, but and, and she might be. But but possibly she's laying back with Gavin. Because when when the merge happens, there there's no need to illustrate to everyone involved who calls all the shots. Right, right. Like like you, like martyrs are 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 like in, at this spot in the game, m- martyrs are great. Yeah. So right. you know if, if Julie wants to wear the Superman suit, you know if 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 she gets she gets killed, that cape still fits other people. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, and I, I see. I, I think, I think Julie and 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 Gavin are smart enough to know that it's just like, hey, they're doing what we want them to do. But if if our quote unquote leaders are are Ron and and Julie on paper, we'll 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 co-sign that. But just yeah. know that we're right there. Right. But you know, but but let them be a a, a target before us because yeah. you know eventually. You know that this this power six will implode. Yes, it will. You know, so so and and when when you have people on the outskirts, you know that that want to want to attack it from the outside, that's when they're gonna you know your your Devons and your uh, your Davids and, and and your war dogs, they're 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 gonna pick on the outside. They're not going to the two people that that think that have the most power because. That's pointless. Right. They're 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 gonna they're gonna they're gonna talk to a Victoria or they're gonna talk to a Gavin and be like, hey, you guys are on the outside. When when in reality they they may not be, and not you know they can either use that information against a war dog or against a uh, uh, um, a, a Wentworth or whoever, or they 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 can they can splinter off with them and 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 call the shots there. Yeah. So, but I I think that. While it looks that 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 Julie is is running the show and 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 Ron's and 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 kudos to them, I really feel that that the true power players could be a, a Victoria who we've learned we learned last week more than more than ever. Oh yeah, <laughs> you can't trust for nothing. No, and, and 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 Gavin Gavin is there in every major conversation. Yep, and I think there's a lot more going on strategically behind the scenes that we're not even seeing. No, no, we're seeing all of it. That's it. Edited. <laughs> Everyone this season was instructed. There's only four minutes of strategy to be discussed every three days. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's crazy. Dude. <laughs> so we we see um, a clip where Rick gives David the other half of the idol, right? Which doesn't surprise me. Those guys yeah. have been working together, you know. Since day one. And I just started thinking again, man, like David is, he is, his name, dude, is not on the radar. He He's the only returning player that is playing the game with a, like a, a, a little chance of possibly going to the end. Like, because Joe and, you know, Aubrey's already voted out. Uh, but you got, you know, Joe and Kelly who are big threats. Davis really doesn't seem to be on anyone's radar right now, you know. And and we go- I don't know. If, I don't know if they saw his. I, like I, I'm thinking these are not the super fans that we gave them credit for. That they that they might might be the same Survivor fans that have only seen the two seasons that that casting instructed them to, right. and they have no idea that Davis played. Yeah, could be. I, I, <laughs> I mean, what they're, they're, I mean, he is a dangerous dude. I mean, I, I like. I would, you know what? Maybe there's the fact that if if I were out there, I would probably be working with him too. Yeah. So maybe there's a, a likability that 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 supersedes the dangerousness. Right. Oh yeah. So we, we see this clip of Joe and Ron talking. Joe's uh, working on painting the flag, and he's kind of like, "Hey, you need to go. You need to go watch. Uh, um, watch what those people are are talking about right now on, on the chicken hunt. Yeah. Yeah. So you know. Ron basically just does a confessional. He wants Joe out. And honestly, yeah. I like Joe, but I do not blame that. Like, I think Joe is the person that was the obvious. Like if I'm playing Joe needs to go now because we I, know I, I either, either he is either the vote before the merge 
two votes before the merge or the first merge vote if he doesn't win immunity. Done deal. There, there's no changing my mind. There's no, like, like in that discussion of, you know, well, Wentworth's pretty dangerous or Joe is like, no, it's Joe. Oh, yeah, 100% yeah. because he's yeah, going to win. He's going to win challenges, dude. And, yeah. you know, if but anyone you wants. Lucky. You got lucky he didn't win that one. Yes. Like, he wasn't struggling in that challenge. Nope. It was windy, so, and it just happened to. Just happenstance. He That's messed up. Reason. Yeah. And it's like, if you're smart, boom, Joe. Joe. Joe, Joe goes home. Joe goes yeah. home. So it, it's kind of a toss-up. Do, do, do I think Wentworth is a much better player? Yes. Right. Oh, yeah. From a, from the whole strategic. Yeah. But but you can, I mean, Wentworth is not going to go on an immunity. Like, I, I don't think she's going to Mike Holloway it. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I hear you. Dude. No, Mike. So, so, yeah. I mean, dude, Joe is definitely the biggest threat to win challenges uh, in, in this game. So, you know. But everyone... that's not the game. The game of Survivor is, I mean, like, you know, you like. You can you can win all those, but there's a social game too, and he played zero social game, just you know, counting on the fact that just like, well, you know, I talked to people for the first half of the game, so I'm just gonna let that ride. I'm gonna paint this flag because that's more important than playing the game, and then I'm gonna vote it out, and then I'm gonna tell people that's the worst thing they could have done because it wasn't. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, 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 they're they're painting a picture for for yeah. Joe to get back in the game. That to me, that his statement so. I know we're skipping along, but his statement of saying that is kind of foreshadowing that he's probably going to come back into the game on day 37. Yeah. So it, it ends up being there's talks. It's it's a tricky. Julie's like, it's a tricky deal between yeah. Joe or Kelly. Right. So we go to tribal council and Chris, Aubrey and Reem walk in three members of our jury I was like mind blown. I was not expecting that. No, no, not at all. Because like when he was like, I'll bring in the jury. I'm just like, wh I'm like, okay, so who got voted out yeah. <laughs> other than the people on edge of extinct? Like, I'm just like, hmm. <laughs> okay. The twist is former survivor players from other seasons are the jury this season. Okay. I can live with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, and I'm just like, hey, wait a second. And why didn't I get that phone call? Right, right. <laughs> I would, I would, I mean, if the pay is right, I would, I would have done that. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yep. Yep. So, so no, no, that was not it. it, it, it Reem is back. So, yeah. Oh gosh. Reem. Yeah. So, uh, my, my big takeaway, uh, Victoria could not be any cuter. Dude, wow. Victoria is oh. ruthless too, because She's she makes so this great. point that so great. You know, she's like voting Rick would be a, a dumb decision. There's way bigger threats than that. And Joe like kind of is like, <laughs> oh, you're talking about me. And she's just like kind of rolls her eyes and she's just like, dude, when I say threat, I'm not necessarily meaning physical threat. There's a lot of threats besides you in yeah. this game. And it really it was dissing Joe big time. Uh, she's so she's so great. And I mean, it, I uh, wow. She's my, smart, my, my, dude. My, my favorite survivor this season, Victoria. Is your favorite? Wow, that's awesome. I like her too. She's smart, yeah. dude. Hey, she... least favorite? War Dog. Yeah, shirt available. <laughs> Johnny, JohnnyFairplay.com. You get a t shirt. Uh, you get a phone call with every t shirt. Go to JohnnyFairplay.com. Get your War Dog Sucks Egg shirt. Hell yeah. And, and the thing is, not only does Victoria throw Joe under the bus, more or less, but Ron throws him under the bus saying, dude, you didn't talk game at all. All you did was sit around camp all day and paint the flag. Yeah. Oh, Ron's faces at tribal. My favorite thing. <laughs> like, like I, I like, I, I like, I, I, of course, like Victoria's face, but Ron's faces. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. He, he's like, he's he, an animated character. He's very animated. Like, I think he's the version of Chet that they wanted on fans versus favorites and didn't get. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, he, I, he's, He's 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 evil. He's he's good. He's good. He's good TV. Yep, he is good. He is good. I I hope we see more of him because I mean, oh, we... I, th I think I think I, you, I there's no like there's no way this guy does a shit confessional. No. Okay. Yep. So no, I I think uh, I think we're gonna get a lot more narration from him unless he goes just incredibly power hungry or he's the injury or whatever next right. episode. I I think we're pretty safe to to uh, we're gonna get some fun. 
Ron stuff. I, he might become hateable by a lot of people. Yeah. Like, like I, I, I could see him like being like really evil and people not liking him. Right. And his stock with me is just going to go through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So either way, I'm, I'm, but like, but what I'm seeing right now, he, he's very, he's very like. Have, have you watched the Ron Clark movie yet? No. I think we need to. I think we need to do a castaway watch along uh, on the Ron Clark. Uh, which called a. Uh, uh, was it Matt? Is it Matt LeBlanc no, or Chan- Chandler from uh, Friends plays okay. Ron Clark? Oh, right on. Cool. <laughs> is that crazy? That is crazy. Because <laughs> like my, my girlfriend's just like she loves Chandler. So she watched the, the Ron Clark movie and she's a teacher. Yeah. And apparently it was in Danville, Virginia, like six months ago. But this, you know, it, it didn't matter then. So I didn't care. Right. So but uh, but. She 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 watched the movie because you know Chandler was in it, and then she was like, you know, someone's like, hey, you know, Ron Clark, the teacher, is on Survivor, and she's like, oh my god, I, and then she she goes, that is not Tra- Chandler from Friends. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and I, I'm not seeing the uh, the similarity, yeah. either. but I think they're both beautiful people in their own way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so <laughs> Joe, I like Joe. I know you're not the biggest fan. Joe goes home. Joe was the best choice to send home at this period of the game. Oh, and no idols played. I mean, like you, you have Wentworth, who's been screwed over by situations before, who, who admittedly tells us in her confessional, hey, the merge, that's when craziness happens. That's when right. p- you, you don't know if you can trust people. You're hearing all these theories. Names are just flying out of people's mouths at record speed. And she's sitting there with an idol and is just like, eh, I'm confident enough that I'm not going to bother playing mine. And she, it could have just as easily been her as it was Joe. It, it could have. It could have. And, uh, you know, she's gambled. And it paid off this time. And so did, Joe goes. Did you see the tweet? Well, I don't know if it was yesterday or today. Someone tweeted, uh, Jeff Probst are just like, hey, I'm a, I'm a stupid viewer and, and I don't remember stuff. And is there a way during Tribal that you can put a little thing on the screen that says who has an idol? So that, and, and Jeff said, that's a great idea. And going forward, we're going to start doing that. Oh, is that why we saw half an idol under Rick Devins? And then it says, I think that was the beginning. And like, like I, I, I thought that was kind of weird. But yeah, yeah they said they, they said that they're going to do a thing at, at Tribal Council, tribal, like a little a little symbol by that person, so that you know that they huh. have it. Interesting. So, but, 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 but did you notice that they didn't do the you know like hashtag drop your buffs, right. hashtag merge or anything? Because yeah. like. I rewound because like the, the, I wanted a picture of me and Piper with, the, with you know, hashtag the murder. Yeah. And, and I'm just like, dude, come on. We're both wearing our buffs. Yeah. I got my shirt on available at johnnyfairplay.com. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> so, <clears throat> that's yeah. awesome. So Joe goes home he, and he's walking out saying, man, they make they made a, they made a thing. The yeah. So we'll see what happens. We see. Yeah. What I thought was interesting is something bad happens in the challenge. And it's not Victoria. Episode. Because Victoria is, is, is concentrating on winning, going, I can't see what happened. Tell me who, who's, who's hurt. <laughs> yeah, so Survivor is no joke, people. I cannot wait till next week. And I tell you what, Johnny, this was my favorite episode thus far. A lot yes. of interesting things, a lot of twists, a lot of unexpected things and I, that caught me off guard with the whole jury deal and, and that. So, uh, I don't know. I, I think that uh, – This season has the potential to really pick up steam going into the last half of the game. Yep. So, oh, one last thing we learned uh, uh, during Joe's confessional. The theme of the merged flag was a phoenix, and Joe has been burned. And from the ashes rises the phoenix. There you go. So, So could could it it be foreshadowing? Is it it, it foreshadowing? I pray not. I bet you it is. I bet you it is. But we will find out uh, throughout, you know, uh, at the day 37, we'll find out. But, uh, Johnny, great episode. Um, Like I said, I I think this this season really started off slow. I'm still a little bit disappointed 
in some of the character development and confessionals of of some of the new people it, it still has been dominated a lot by you know I, I feel like it opened up tonight a little bit yeah it did and i think it's going to open up even more and if these if these newbies are smart they're going to get all of the returning players out of the game i i have confidence that uh victoria and ron are are not going to be wanting to uh have kelly and uh and david in this game very much longer so yeah we'll, no. we'll see so. how it plays out well, uh, as uh, as we mentioned before, it, it definitely helps our numbers, helps the ratings. We were rated number 68 last week in the iTunes Top 200. Uh, to help that happen, uh, subscribe to Survivor NSFW and click the uh, uh, rate us five stars. Click subscribe and uh, write a review. Say, hey, it's great. We love it. Uh, also, uh, if you want to watch us or if you just want to support the show, uh, go to patreon.com slash survivor NSFW uh, for five bucks a month. You get a video version of every podcast uh, that we do each week. And for $10, you get uh, the Castaway Watch Along, the Q&A, which is our favorite. Uh, and and uh, for any of those, you, you join the uh, the secret uh, uh, Facebook group. Uh, we also have a version where I send you autograph pics from me, Matt, and a surprise castaway each month. And then uh, there's uh, there's even even more stuff where you get a buff and all that. But check it out at patreon.com slash Survivor NSFW. Join me and Wendell Holland and Purple Pants Bryce Wednesday, April 10th in Baltimore at the Brass Tap at the Fitzgerald. Tickets available at SurvivorTix.com. I'll be April 24th at Zany's in Nashville, joined by Taj and Figgy. Get tickets for that uh, for April 24th at SurvivorAfterHours.com. And May 1st, that's a Wednesday, of course, I will be uh, at Busby's West in Santa Monica, joined by Jay, Rhino, and Nina. It's going to be an awesome time. Plenty more Survivors still to come to be announced. Uh, tickets for that available at Survivor Tix. That's SurvivorTix.com. Join me and get your T-shirt at JohnnyFairPlay.com. And you get a phone call from Johnny Fairplay. Oh, yeah. And the next six. If we get six more people this week, I'll call all those people to join the Patreon. So, uh, Right Matt. on, Johnny. Dude, it's been, a, it's been a great, fun time. Hey, what if somebody wants to get a Blackstone Griddle? What do they do? Listen, if you want a Blackstone Griddle, I've become... A, uh, You're the face of Blackstone. I'm a lover of cooking now, and I have a discount code. If you go to BlackstoneProducts.com, use the code BlackstoneBeard, gets you 10% off plus free shipping. And follow Johnny Fairplay and myself on all social media platforms, and we will see you guys next week on another exciting episode of Survivor NSFW. Cheers.